my beautiful shining stars. My name is Christina and as always, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about chakras. Now I have already mentioned chakras and I went through a very in-depth video right here. Just go and watch that video because after you understand the colors, the sounds and everything, it will make much more sense how I'm trying to explain it for you. In here okay in that video i have asked you if you want me to be a little more specific when it comes to manifesting certain realities based on what kind of blockage you have in your chakra so first of all a little run through what are chakras chakras are energetical points in our body that are believed to be connected to our organs and also to our nervous system these seven chakras go from the bottom of our spine all the way to the top of our head now we talk mostly about seven chakras but nowadays teachers believe that there are actually nine chakras and the reason why is because they are connecting the chakras to dimensions if we actually talk about the number of chakras that we have it's 114 chakras and many of them are actually outside of our body as well from a spiritual perspective chakras are these discs that actually spin the energy in our body and in my opinion and not just in my opinion they are like storage libraries so each chakra is in charge of different type of energy and we have to not forget that the universe responds to our energy it doesn't respond to our thoughts of what we think that we are a response only to our energy of who we are today and therefore the flow of the energy in your body and how it actually flows through that center is going to weave the result of the manufactured reality that you are living in right now so in other and simpler words i would say based on how open or closed your chakras are, you are going to be manifesting certain reality that correlates with that type of energy. Okay, so now I want to actually discuss what is blocked and overactive chakra. After that, we're going to move into each chakra and I'm going to tell you the realities that you are going to be manifesting subconsciously for the most part. That are a warning that that energy that chakra is not closed or is too open and you are not balanced and then of course in the end we're going to talk about how to balance your chakras we're going to talk about the flow of your energy as in water now imagine that that your chakras are like water tanks to flow through that tank and that tank that water tank is going to charge it with its own properties but as i've said before it is way easier said than done because Life is constant uh, overflow of inputs and most of them get stored subconsciously because we're not aware. Most of the people are not aware even though it's getting much better now. Water flows through that water tank based on how healthy and balanced that tank is. The water is going to be either really squeezed through it. So for example, you know, if the tank is too closed, based on bad memories, holding grudges, and so on, the, the water tank is gonna be really, really close and it's gonna get just one drop of water, or it might be too open, meaning holding no boundaries whatsoever, and the water is like spilling everywhere, it's chaos, it's madness, okay? So each water tank should be like this, it should be balanced, and this way the water just goes in its own pace, peaceful pace, through the water tank, it gets charged with the red color or the sound long. If the tank is broken and is not balanced, obviously neither one is good, blocked or overactive, because blocked means it's gonna become really rusty because it's, it's basically out of use. If it's too open, uh, it can break the gates, obviously. As being a human being, as I've said before, there are constantly new inputs and you're producing your own energy, you have memories. And like I said, these water tanks are also working as a storage space because you already had that flow through it before and water carries a memory. So all that memory, when the water dries on the sides of the water tank, it is still there. It's just dry, but it's still there. It's stuck on the walls. So it's a lot of memory. And based on the amount of water in each tank, 
that water gets illuminated as it flows through that water tank with that specific color. So if there's no water in the tank, the tank really doesn't get illuminated. If, there, if there's too much water in the tank, that tank is shining so much it overpowers the other tank. So of course, we have to learn what is our emotional flow first, how to navigate it so it goes smoothly and then focus on each chakra, each energetical point through our body. So this is where I would also bring in another perspective into it, and that is that each chakra is connected with different elements. So your root is connected with earth, your sacral is water, solar is fire, heart is air, throat is akasha or ether, and then our third eye is light energy and our crown chakra is the space. So to give you an example, from a practical point of view, if you're eating your food and you're really angry, anger means a lot of fire. Solar plexus already is in charge of fire. So imagine you're, you're feeding it way more fire as you're eating angry. So what can that manifest in? Well, obviously it can manifest in you having heartburn, for example. So that is one point. Now, from a practical point of view, let's just give a storyline. You're eating your lunch in your workspace and your, your boss is telling you that, listen, you got to change this, 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 this. And you desperately want to stand up for yourself, but you don't. Like your, your character is too fluid, okay? You're eating your food. What can actually happen is that you're going to have the runs because there's too much water, fluid energy in your gut. Now this goes very, very, very much in depth when we're talking about holistic um, healing, about Ayurveda. Now, if you're interested in Ayurveda, do let me know by saying I am interested, exclamation mark, and I will try to make maybe some video about basics of Ayurveda and how you can balance uh, these elements within your body and how to know what kind of dosha you have and so on. Okay, so now let's go to why you're here. How do you know that that particular chakra is blocked or overactive? What kind of reality are you going to be manifesting? The first is our root chakra. When you are the type of a person that constantly gets sick when nothing is really going on, that means that your root chakra can be disbalanced. It is believed that root chakra is in charge of the health of your body. It is also believed that this chakra is very much connected to your skin and to your hair. If you are the type of a person who has big dreams, but you get home and you feel extremely lazy and fatigued, that is root chakra disbalance. If you are the type of a person who is constantly up and down when it comes to your weight, when you're constantly up and down when it comes to your finances, because you're disorganized, because you don't have discipline, that is root chakra disbalance. If you are in a ho household that you feel like you don't belong, or you're constantly being told that you don't belong, or you yourself just innately feel like you don't belong, that is root chakra disbalance. You will basically constantly feel like you're not in peace. It can also manifest in you, even when there's nothing really going on, you will just feel like you're restless and something is wrong, but you don't really, you can't really say what is wrong. It's just that you don't feel basically the earth under your feet, the ground, the stability. You constantly feel unstable. Okay? There's a sudden sound and I, I hope you can hear it, but if so, I apologize. Then we go to your sacral chakra. It is connected with your inner child archetype, it is connected with your emotions, it is connected with creative energy, it is connected with sex sexual energy also. It is also connected with your pleasure point. It is believed that it is also in charge of fluids in your body like blood. And now it can also, from physical point of view, be connected with your lower back, which is a story of my life. And if you haven't seen the video about my personal story of my spiritual awakening you can check it right here it was when i realized afterwards because i had this very profound dream <laughs> my sacral chakra was completely disbalanced you are meeting people that are constantly putting you in that position of victim mentality uh, if you think about the archetype of inner child you have to think about someone who's dependent so if you are if codependency you know, if you are uh, feeling like like you're co codependent on someone or that someone depends on you too much, it goes both ways. That is something that is connected to sacral chakra. Then we're also talking about, obviously, 
going back to the inner child archetype if you are that type of a person who just cannot let go and you don't want to allow yourself to feel like a child again to be free and you're too stern too serious or on the opposite side you are too irresponsible and you don't want to take charge this is where we're balancing the feminine and masculine the wounded sexuality wounded sexual archetype of the feminine or the divine masculine also if you feel like there are memories especially traumatic memories that you don't want to reopen they're stored in here and trust me again talking from a personal experience sometimes it is good to do it sooner than later because it, it's going to just the energy is going to be like this in there till it bursts and as a result my herniated disc bursted as well your solar chakra is in charge of fire so it goes after your warm personality, your confidence, and your willpower. It could mean that you are constantly put in positions where you have to stand up for yourself and you're too scared to stand up for yourself and therefore you are running away from challenges, from facing someone. You just you are a very non-conflictuous person and as a result, you're going to be living a main life because you need that spark, that fire and, and stand up for yourself and fight for what you believe you deserve when i say fight i don't mean physically fight i don't mean that you should argue with people i just mean that you should have that energy that this is what i deserve this is you know i have this willpower and i know who i am this is where your integrity is this is where you're building your integrity this is very much connected with your inner warrior archetype and i actually have a video dedicated to your archetypes your three major archetypes so you can go watch that in here because i do talk much more in depth about your inner warrior archetype it is going to lead you through life to get exactly what you deserve those type of people that are excited about something like let's say they see a competition on tv and they're like i'm gonna go there so they sign up and they're excited and as it's coming you know closer to the date they're like um they bail out they just they can't take the challenge they don't want to face their fears do not run away from challenges that's what life is about it's one huge challenge and we cannot live it in our comfort zone of course we should live it within the boundaries of being safe physically safe and mentally safe and spiritually safe but sometimes we have to push ourselves right so when you feel like you're too scared of life you're too scared of people you never stand up for yourself and you constantly push in the situations perhaps you have a partner who's trying to like push you and so on and you're just you're too scared that is a simple reality now if we move higher we're talking about our heart chakra well there's a lot to say about heart chakra but i will just say one thing most of the people live stuck within these three lower chakras the root chakra sacral chakra and your solar plexus chakra now that doesn't mean that these are bad of course but i call them the hamster wheel the physical 3d reality and it's funny because as i said at the very beginning the reason why uh, people put the nine chakras now and many of them connected with nine dimensions first second third dimension they're stuck within the third dimension these are the everyday tasks like i have to go to work i have to make money i have to make sure i have something to eat i have to put my kids to school this that this that this uh, and we're constantly like in that wheel and we can't escape that i always say the magic starts when you transcend those three and you go to the fourth one where it's the dimension of dreams it's the dimension of no time no space like it's like boundless basically and this is when we are starting to become really powerful and and we can actually manifest lots of things we're gonna get to the manifestation part a little later uh, but i just needed to throw that out there we need to first really like balance these three and make sure that we don't store anything in there there's nothing unhealed in there so that we can start believing in ourselves and start focusing on basically bringing these dreams into the reality so your heart chakra is believed to be connected with the element of air and therefore it is believed to be connected with your lungs on on the physical aspect and also with your immune system this is what i was saying before now why immune system because the power of heart is so strong that it determines everything else our body will respond 
to what we feel about our body. I see actually many people having this chakra too open also and they have no boundaries and they will just let people do whatever to them because they desperately want that love from them because they don't understand that love is not something that can be transmuted, it's something that is self-generated. So as a result of that, they will get into a point when they will start, it will start tasting very bittersweet and then it's just gonna be bitter. And then what's gonna happen is it goes from this to this basically. And you can never allow to close your heart because it is game over at that point. I know it sounds scary, but it is the truth. Your heart needs to be open and it needs to be balanced. You need to have boundaries, but you also need to allow yourself to love. That is the highest purpose of your being. That is why I'm saying that it's game over because there's a lot of things that can happen afterwards if you don't open this chakra. You will keep getting the partners that you feel innately do not love you or at least they don't love you the way that you want to be loved and you are even communicating it to them. Constantly feel like you need to do something more to, to earn that love. You are meeting partners that are narcissistic um, or you yourself when this heart chakra is closed you're gonna be the one who's the narcissist because you don't wanna allow yourself to love anybody but yourself. Uh, it could also be that you have no boundaries when it comes to your friends, when it comes to people around you. You know, this is all about like the love and unity and everything, but it is so necessary to first put your energy into building a healthy relationship with yourself and I know some people will think like, this is crazy. Why are you talking about yourself from a different perspective? Well, I don't think it's crazy. I think it's absolutely necessary to love yourself. Because the way that you love yourself is that kind of love that you're going to be attracting from somewhere else. And if you don't love yourself and you're waiting for someone to give you that love, well, good luck with that. And you constantly want to be around other people because you feed from their energy and especially they give you compliments and you kind of feel loved but deep inside you just feel broken and alone and it doesn't matter how many people are going to tell you something you just feel alone and the last thing i'm going to say is it can make you extremely judgmental because you feel that disconnection with other beings with other humans and you can also attract a lot of partners that are going to invoke this within you so either you're going to be acting cruel towards them or you're going to be attracting partners that are cruel and cold it's a whole vibe <laughs> that is just not good the electromagnetic field of your heart is so huge this is why I'm saying that when you go here higher, you will start finally believing in yourself, loving yourself, loving your life, loving the source. And as a result, because the source will always respond to who you are today, you are going to start manifesting your dreams into reality. But now we're going to go to your throat chakra. This chakra is so powerful that I truly believe that if you manage to open this chakra, be in control of this chakra, it will make you jump into the 5D. Now, everybody talks about jumping into 5D, 5D, I'm sorry, but I'm gonna tell you my opinion. No, most of the people are in 3D. And um, I've heard my favorite, favorite guy, Matthias De Stefano, say that there's no 5D if you cannot enjoy 3D. I absolutely agree with that. Why is everybody so obsessing about 5D? Like, learn to live in the 3D and naturally, the response is going to be that you're going to transcend into the higher dimensions. But everybody wants to just escape this reality. That's never going to happen, sorry. But going back to the chakra, if you manage to open this chakra, there's something about this chakra that is so powerful, so powerful. It always reminds me of Shiva. I actually have a story related to when I was meditating once and I was like focusing on my throat chakra, basically opened my third eye. I was beyond space, time, anything, I became I. It was the most beautiful feeling I've ever felt. In my life, I didn't wanna go. I didn't want to go back home or I felt like I was at home. When you open this chakra, you will start seeing patterns and you will start manifesting things into reality really fast. This is the, the if we talk about 5D, that's the reality in or dimension in which 
we see everything and we can we see it from such a high perspective that we understand why this happened how it's correlated to that um why you must like basically you see the span of your life and what you can do with it it's impossible for us to comprehend what it actually means but when you step into that power you will not just feel that you can manifest anything you will know that you can manifest everything it makes sense in a way because this this chakra is connected with the sound with your voice and the universe responds to the sound at the beginning of everything there was a word there was a sound it creates your inner sound who you are really the truth when you activate your inner sound you will basically become a transmitter it is believed that it could be related to stutters or any issues with you talking now obviously if you have panic attack when it comes to public speaking or just speaking to people in general being very this is the chakra of expression so you don't want to express yourself you are very shy very inwards another practical example of a reality would be that if you meet someone who's very loud who's very cheerful who is who doesn't have any issues speaking it's rather the opposite they speak a lot and it bugs you so much i'm sorry to say but the truth is you you 100 have this balanced throat chakra and the reality is that you actually wish to be as open and to speak loudly and be as expression full about who you are as that person but you're not and it bugs you that is what really bugs you now there are of course people that naturally don't speak as much they're introverts and i can relate to that 100 i don't speak unless it's necessary but that being said i also believe that every human being wants to express we want to be heard we want to be seen it is innately given to us we want to tell the world who we are and we want the world to love us for who we are and so you navigate your life in like very shy way and you i'm gonna say it if you have tendencies to lie a lot and to say things to fabricate things if you gossip or if you attract people that gossip ar uh, around you a lot if you attract people that make you lie and make you um, kind of fabricate the truth this is the chakra that speaks the truth it's not the chakra that is the truth those are higher and if you are not being able to speak the truth or if you feel an inkling that you want to lie that means that this chakra is not balanced by the way, if you notice that cats, dogs, dolphins, horses, some kind of bugs, also pigeons, they don't want to be around you, it could also mean that your throat chakra is disbalanced. And by the way, as I've said before, this is the area where Shiva, the Hindu god, one of the holy trinity, has had the snake. So it is said that when this chakra is open and activated, like powerful and illuminating this blue light, it is said and believed that snakes are going to be very sensitive to that. They're very much in tune with this chakra. Despite the third eye being hidden behind your actual eyes, the pineal gland, it is connected with the element of light. By the way, there is a very interesting correlation to sun gazing that I have seen. I have seen uh, documentaries about ancient Egypt where they were actually doing the sun gazing. So what they were doing is that they would look into the sun early morning when the sun is not as sharp, as violent, and they would feed their pineal gland. That, that light would go straight into their pineal gland. And as a result, they were um, they didn't have to eat as much they didn't have to sleep as much. They always were high on energy and high on very good emotional flow, basically. And it's interesting because I recently saw a documentary about a guy who's doing sun gazing. Now, I have never tried it. Um, I've seen at the end of the documentary that he went to a, an eye doctor. I don't know what the name of that doctor is specifically, but they basically told him that he has burned both his eyes. But the strange thing was that he had perfect vision and he has felt really happy in his life. Basically, it, it turned his life upside down. 
Uh, I'm not saying that it works because as I said, I'm quite skeptical actually in general and so I haven't tried it. I don't know, but it is interesting. Okay, so this is where we are talking about building your inner truth. Huh. <laughs> when you are going through spiritual awakening, this chakra is a complete mess for the most part because you have seen the world with your two eyes you have built certain truth for yourself and now all of a sudden you feel that everything crumbles and the truth has been lying beneath your eyes and what you have seen and what you have perceived and it's so different from what you have believed and as a result i mean i know personally i was so melancholic i was like almost depressed I didn't want to speak to anybody, didn't want to be around anybody. I felt like the world was such a dark place. It was not unicorns and violets and roses and rainbows. It was very much the opposite for me. So this chakra is connected with your true inner wisdom. It is the first chakra that is connected with the spiritual realm. We're talking about light energy in here. And as I said, when you go through spiritual awakening, this chakra goes completely wild and it's so important to balance it so that you can get through the stage of everything is dark, I, I am so confused, I don't understand what's happening, who am I, what is my truth, I believe that I was this person who wanted this, who was with this person and all of a sudden I am not this person, I don't believe this and I don't want to be with that person. When you start seeing everything from a different perspective, this chakra is overactive. And it needs to be balanced in order for you to get a smoother transition. If your eyes are sensitive to light, this is what I've had actually, I remember, like my eyes became so sensitive to light. It is so strange because I'll tell you one thing, my entire life, I always had really bad vision when it comes to, to seeing in the darkness. I still kind of have it, but as a result of that, I never wanted to be in dark places because it freaked me out and make me feel comfortable. And also I just, couldn't see anything. Um, my husband is always telling me <laughs> we're the opposites. He always tells me, why are you in this dark place? Like you're cutting tomatoes, you're gonna chop off your finger. Why don't you put the light on? And I'm like, I like darkness. I can see perfectly fine in darkness and I actually love it. I love it right now. It's, com it's like 180, it's complete opposite. It's strange, but this happened after my spiritual awakening. Now from a practical point of view, if you are put in places where you need to fight for your truth, you need to fight for your freedom, you desperately want to um, show the world this is the truth, that's also disbalance. Because you don't need to show them the truth. There is no truth, by the way. There are very, very few universal truths in the universe. <laughs> that's why it's called probably universal. Um, but most of the things that we build is just our truth. That is why I don't get when people are trying to impose their, their truth upon you. It's like your truth it is good for you. Keep that truth, but it's not good for me. It's not gonna work for me. Let me just do me. That's the point of why we are here because the source wants to perceive and experience everything from these million points of views. That is the point of our life, let me live my truth. Stop having dreams, or if you start having nightmares, if you are having clouded mind, you can't gather your thoughts, you're being confused, you're very stubborn, or you meet with someone, especially if it's a partner, who's very stubborn and you constantly have to debate, basically fighting for your reality or feeling as you have to fight for your reality to protect your truth. Okay, so now we go to the crown chakra and that is connected with the space energy. From a physical point of view, it is believed that if you keep having headaches, um, that means that uh, this chakra is disbalanced. I've had pain in the top of my head for a very long time, like very, very long time, especially when I was going through my spiritual awakening. I couldn't touch the top of my head. There was a point on my head that was like a little spiky. One of the things that is very bizarre to me, I personally believe that it was connected to my crown chakra being opening, basically during the time when I was going through my spiritual awakening. And from practical point of view, a sample of a reality would be, because this is all about connection with the higher realms. This is where we start finally going into the higher realms. 
and um, it is connecting us with the spiritual realm. It is connecting up, uh, connecting us with angels, with our spirit guide. So this is when we are reaching closer to the full awareness of who I am. If you're trying to meditate and you cannot feel like you are completely um, detached from the spiritual realm and you want to connect but you cannot, you just don't feel that connection or you feel like you don't want to surrender, you don't feel like you're guided with your by, by your spiritual guides anymore, this is a tricky one. If you feel that you are enlightened and you're trying to push spirituality upon somebody else, this means that this chakra is disbalanced because when you are truly enlightened, you understand that you cannot push anybody into spirituality. They have to find it on their own. Everybody has a different life path. We have to honor all storylines and we have to let them be. Now, if you feel like you are not enough, you believe you're not enough, you have people that keep telling you you're not enough, or if you are constantly partying and you never want to be alone and in silence okay so we have gone through all seven chakras and maybe you have found yourself to be stuck in some kind of reality that is manifested because of a blockage or overflow in one of the chakras if so you can always send me a private message on christina de raju on instagram and i try my best to reply to everybody in there and now let's go into how can you actually balance your chakras because that is the most important part uh, we don't want to live in that kind of reality we want to manifest a dream life i'm going to tell you three simple steps so the first thing as we have mentioned at the very beginning it is believed that chakras are connected with our physical body and therefore it is necessary to start paying attention to what we eat so each food has different type of element, different type of energy, and it can help us to balance the elements within our body and therefore, as a result, balance our chakras. Now, there's a beautiful book, which I highly recommend from Sahara Rose, uh, one of my most favorite books, her cookbook, um, Ayurvedic cookbook that I actually have in my house in Prague. And, um, I absolutely love that book. You have a physical 3D body for a reason. And we have to make sure that when we're healing, we're doing it holistically and we focus on what we eat. And Ayurveda is just, for me, I absolutely love Ayurveda. If you want me to make a video about that, I will. The second thing that I can tell you is that, as I've mentioned, and this is, you're already doing the work, by the way, you have to start becoming much more aware of what you're manifesting in your life. So take an inventory of what's happening around you and what you feel internally. So when you start becoming aware of this is what I'm manifesting over, especially if something is a pattern, it's a cycle, it's a spiral, and you're manifesting it over and over, that means that you didn't understand the lesson. You have to learn the lesson, otherwise you're gonna be going to the same class over and over and over until you pass the test. When you find the issue, you can cure the issue. Without it, you're just putting a plaster on a symptom. You don't really know what the problem is. The third one, which I would tell you, is that you need to be connected and surrender when it comes to your spirit. Now, there's a very simple thing that you can do, and that is a meditation and also a prayer. So what I do every morning is I always say, I surrender, just show me the signs and I'll follow. I am ready for the next step. I'm ready, I'm ready, I fully surrender. It is so simple, so effective. Sometimes it will give you uh, an answer. That you're like, what? Why would I have to do this? But when you do it, you realize like, oh, I have met this person and that person has helped me with this and now I healed that. It's good to surrender. It is good to surrender. But you have to innately feel that you're surrendering because you are truly guided. Okay, so this was most likely a very long video, but I hope that I have answered everything. If you have more questions related to your chakras, if you want me to make more videos related to chakras, let me know down below. I'm always happy to help. With that being said, thank you so much for being here with me. As always, I honor your time a lot. I love you.